to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Gordian Knot, an adaptation of a very old legend written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Gordian Knot Once upon a time, in an ancient land called Phrygia, the king had died. He had no sons or daughters to replace him, no queen to take up his throne. He had no family of any kind, and the kingdom was in chaos. Everyone wondered who would lead them, who would guide them, who would see them safely through the dangerous times in which they lived. Finally, out of desperation, they consulted one of their oracles, who were wise people believed to be able to peer into the future. Oracle, they cried. The king has died, and there is no one to take his place. What do we do? This oracle was a wizened old woman, and she peered at them through eyes gone milky white. The king has died, but all will be well, she said. I can see into the future, and not far do I have to look. Tomorrow, at dawn, our new king will reveal himself. Look to the eastern gate of the city. He will come with the sun, riding a wagon. He will appear humble and plain, but he has the blessing of the gods and shall be a ruler just and kind. The people were skeptical, but thankful to at least have an idea. They stayed up all through the night, thousands of them crowding around the eastern gate of the city. Some people were making bets on whether or not anyone would come, and others were circling the crowd, selling hot food and drinks. As dawn approached, they squinted into the rising sun. No one has come, someone shouted. The oracle was wrong, said someone else. We'll never have a king. The crowd began to grumble. But then a shape appeared. No more than a shadow with the sun suddenly bright behind its back. What's that? Could it be? The sun blazed up, its first rays spreading golden like butter on warm, fresh bread. In the sudden light, the crowd saw a man riding in a wagon. They watched in stunned silence as his ox pulled him through the eastern gates of the city. Uh, hello, the man said, surprised to find thousands on thousands of people standing in a loose semicircle around the gate. Am I interrupting something? The king! cried out a voice, and it was picked up by the crowd. The king! The king is here! The celebration broke out, and the man was lifted from his wagon and paraded around the city. The man... A simple farmer named Gordius was declared king, and he moved into the palace with his young son, Midas. This was the same Midas who would later have the golden touch and get donkey ears, but those are different stories for a different day. To honor their new king, the people renamed their city Gordium and ushered him onto the throne. To celebrate their good luck, Gordius and his son Midas placed their ox cart in the palace yard. Inspired by the gods, they gathered all of the thin rope they had been carrying and began to weave it together. For a full day and night they worked, and when they finished, the rope was tied and twisted and turned into a giant knot the size of a boulder, resting heavy on the open back of their ox cart. This is for Zeus! Gordius said when they finished, and no one shall ever untie what we have tied. And true to his word, the knot remained tied for many years. No one knows for sure how long it remained, but it outlasted Gordius and Midas and indeed the entire kingdom of Phrygia. 
They were conquered by the Persians and subject to their rule. Through those years, the knot grew harder and crusted, molded over and nappy with age. If it had been difficult to untie all those years ago, it had grown downright impossible. It sat like a boulder of rope in the center of the old palace yard, a relic of an older age. Until another oracle came. This one was a young woman, and she had seen into the future in a dream. The people of Gordium gathered around as she told them of her prophecy. I have looked into the days to come, she said, her voice a mystic whirl. The Gordian knot shall be undone, and the person who completes this arduous task will go on to greatness. The person who undoes the Gordian knot will rule over all of Asia. The crowd gasped and whispered. The Persian Empire had control over so much, and it was unthinkable that someone would be able to take all of Asia. Still, many people longed for greatness. So as the word of the oracle spread, they came to the city to try and undo the Gordian knot and claim their greatness. Hundreds of people came. Sailors who tied and untied knots on ships, weavers who worked with the finest threads, Parents who struggled at their kids' tangled bootlaces, all of them came to undo the Gordian knot. And all of them were defeated, unable to even loosen a single strand. The legend of the knot continued to spread, and soon it drew a mighty champion from the Persian army. He was a hulking man, seven feet tall with arms as thick as oak trunks. His head was shaved bald, but his beard was a black bush of wiry hair, and the earth seemed to shake with every step he took. Behold, people of Gordium, he bellowed, walking into the palace square. I have come to undo your puny knot. He flexed his muscles, the veins standing out under his skin like snakes. Everyone looked on. They had seen many people try their luck with the knot, but no one as strong as this gargantuan soldier. I will defeat the knot in the name of Persia, and we will conquer all of Asia ourselves. He strode up to the knot and began to pull at the ropes. His muscles strained, his teeth bared in a snarl. I'll have this out in a moment! He heaved and tore. He pried and probed and twisted. He hefted the boulder-sized knot in his mighty arms and squeezed and snarled. And nothing. For all his strength, for all his effort, he was rewarded with nothing at all. It didn't loosen so much as an inch. Oh, if I can't do it, it can't be done, he said. No one shall take Asia. He gave the giant knot a final punch and stormed away. Others came and crashed against the knot like waves on a beach, and a short while later came the most famous thief in all the world. She was a slight thing with long hair and dark eyes. She wore soft leather and moved like a whisper. It was said her hands were so fine and delicate that she could pick even the most difficult lock in seconds, and that she had stolen more treasure than most kings had ever seen. I have come for the knot, she said simply. The crowds parted and the master thief approached the knot. Unlike the others, she didn't rush or pull or prod. No, She circled the boulder-sized knot like a cat might a mouse, peering at it from every angle, watching it through heavy-lidded eyes. And now, she said, shaking loose her hands, watch a master at work. Gently, carefully, tenderly, her fingers began to work at the knot. 
Unlike the sailors and the weavers and the parents and the brute, she seemed to relish taking her time. Every movement was like part of a dance as she wove around the boulder-sized knot. She worked for a minute, an hour, and well into the night. The moon was a thin sliver of crescent, so people brought torches for her to see by. And when the dawn rose the next morning, the knot was unchanged. Unbeaten. The thief had failed. This is impossible, she said bitterly, throwing up her hands. If I can't do it, then it can't be done. This knot will live forever as a testament to Zeus, and no greatness will be found here. She packed up her things and disappeared as quickly as she had come. After that, fewer people came to try the knot, and those who did gave up nearly as soon as they had started. The people of Gordium gave up hope that anyone would ever defeat it. The colossal tangle would stand until the end of days, growing more crusted and gnarled with every passing week until it was solid as stone itself. And then came King Alexander. He was young, no more than 20 years old when he had claimed the throne of ancient Greece, which was then known as Macedonia. Already he had started to spread his kingdom, claiming more land than anyone had ever thought possible. He was a brave leader, always at the front of his armies. But more than that, he was a kind leader. He tied together the people of different lands and treated them well so that they were happy to be a part of his empire. He came to Gordium alone with his sword and armor, riding his warhorse. The thousands gathered as he approached the knot. They had heard of Alexander. He was a good king and a mighty warrior, but surely he wasn't as strong as the Persian or as cunning as the thief. What hope did he have of undoing the knot? And without the knot, what hope did he have of adding Asia to his empire? Alexander walked around the knot once and then again. He wore a slight smile and didn't seem at all discouraged by the layers of grime and age that had hardened the boulder-sized knot. My name is Alexander, he called out to the crowd, and he drew his sword with a steely ring. And I shall have the greatest kingdom ever seen. He turned and swung his blade. It whistled down, sharp and glinting red in the sun. With barely a whisper, the sword sliced through the knot and it fell in pieces at his feet, unraveling in an instant. For a moment, everything was still. Alexander stood over the undone knot. His sword hung in the air. The crowd held their breath, unsure whether to boo or cheer. And then thunder split the sky. It roared like a lion and lightning followed, a yellow forking tongue cracking across the clouds in bright blue and purple. It surged and crashed to earth around Alexander again and again, six times in total. It kicked up smoke and made everyone's hair stand on end and blinded them with its brilliance. And then, when the crowd blinked their eyes open and the smoke cleared, Alexander stood tall and proud. They burst into cheers. Six was the sacred number of Zeus, and by striking six bolts of lightning, he showed that Alexander and his unique solution had indeed defeated the knot. Alexander went back to his army and, true to the prophecy, he soon conquered Asia and more, earning himself a place in history as the greatest military mind ever to rule an army and the name, still heard today, of Alexander the Great. The End Thanks for listening.